What's a story you always wanted to tell on this sub, but nobody ever asked the right question? I always knew my great grandfather as the guy who lost his eye at an accident with a firecracker. This Christmas I found out that it saved his life twice. Once. Because he had tickets for the Titanic. Which he then missed because of the accident in the second time. When he was supposed to fight in World War 1. He went to the office where he was supposed to sign up for it. Told them that he was disabled. Which they did not believe. So he took his glass eye out of the socket and placed it in front of the officers. So yeah. Losing an eye isn't the worst that could happen. My wife teaches kindergarten more or less. My son attends kindergarten at the same school. I brought them a tire, the size of a monster truck tire, to play on in their yard, don't ask why, weird idea, but they loved it, so we cleaned it up, scrubbed it, and I drilled holes in it so the water would drain when it rained. Few days ago it's just me and my son, I ask how his day was and he says, blah blah fun, blah blah ate lunch, blah blah fun, blah blah Xavier got his finger stuck in the tire, blah blah fun, comma. So I ask him to back up, and he just repeats that his friend Xavier got his finger stuck in the tire in one of the holes we drilled for draining the water. I told him that sounded sad, and he said, yes it was and it rained. So I thought, poor kid. So I said, "Ro, poor kid, did you get him a raincoat? And he said, no daddy, we didn't want to get near him cause he pooped himself. So I'm thinking, really poor kid. So I said, "Ro." Really poor kid, did the teachers help him? And he said something like, he was out there a long time. Then it devolved and I really couldn't get any more information out of him. So I felt guilty about this kid, cause I did drill the holes in the tire, but eventually it slips my mind. Wife gets home, we have dinner, etc. But I forgot about it till I'm talking to her way after the kids have gone to bed. Then suddenly it pops into my head so I say to her, so, our son, told me one of the kids got his finger stuck in the tire toter, and she just bursts out laughing. I sat there dumbfounded. Then she explained to me Xavier isn't one of the kids. He's a teaching assistant who is supposed to take care of the delayed kid in the class. Except his kid didn't show up. So he just played with the other students all day. Apparently this 25 year old guy was sitting on the tire and thought it was a smart idea to try to jam his finger into one of the holes. Which makes it crazy. Thinking a little kid could get their finger in almost made sense. But for an adult finger it's almost a miracle he could get it in without breaking a bone. Anyways. Apparently he got his finger in there and couldn't pull it out. And they couldn't pick up or move the tire. And the guy was stuck out there for hours and yes. It did drain. And yes. He really did it himself. My wife said all the kids kept watching him out the window as it rained. Eventually they called emergency and she said she was gone at lunch when they arrived. But Xavier was gone when she got back and the guy didn't come back to school that week. We still don't know how they got his finger out. I noticed that whenever I'd order Jimmy John's for delivery, the drivers were either really uptight when I'd answer the door, or seemed very uninterested and wouldn't look at me. This was surprising. Because I try to be really nice to service industry people. I was doing a group order and wanted to make a note in the comments section to bring extra napkins when I finally pieced it all together. My account had an old comment still in the special instructions tab. Saying do not make eye contact at the door. I must have made it with my friends when we were drunk as a joke and forgotten. That means the past dozen orders or so all had that attached to the order ticket without me knowing. I was once hanging out outside a bar in a bad part of town. My friend and I were just waiting for an Uber when a group of sketchy duckers came up and started talking to us aggressively. We were 90% sure we were going to get robbed. I was just kinda over it. I had a bad day already. I just started making a string of D jokes in conversation until the guy said this guy's weird. And left us alone. My buddy and I went to the gym one night. It was a 24 hour gym and we're introverts so we liked going late at night when it wasn't busy. Nobody else was there that night. It was around 1am on a weekday. I finish my workout first and hit the showers. I'm washing up in my little shower stall and minding my own business. Then all of a sudden. I feel cold water running down my back and my ass. That so much buddy of mine filled up a bucket of freezing cold water. Snuck up behind the stall with his eyes closed, 
Obviously does not want to accidentally see my Dior ass, put it over the store door and poured it. I screamed in terror because it was so ducking cold and he was laughing his ass off. I decided to get him back. I was gonna flash my D at him. I finish my shower. And I overhear footsteps coming to the change room. The change area and shower area were separated by a thin wall. I decided this was the moment. I run to the change area in my towel. Whip it out and yell wanna see my D? It wasn't my buddy. It was some random guy who showed up for a late night workout. I was mortified. I showed this dude my D. My buddy was outside the locker room dying. We never saw that guy at that gym again. For good reason. TLDR. My buddy poured cold water down my naked ass. I decide to flash him my dong as payback. Flashed someone else by accident. My family was once rescued from a hurricane by a Colombian drug lord. We lived aboard a boat and our engine went out while Wilma was forming around us. We ended up having to do an emergency tack into a hurricane hole that was in his territory. He helped us fix our engine. Gave us advice on our next trek so we could avoid waters that were pirate infested. And invited us to his house for dinner. I wish I knew his name because my family would have been in serious danger were it not for his kindness. Drank two and a half glasses of ouzo and some beer. Then got thirsty and drank a lot. And I mean a lot of water. Next morning collapsed in the bathroom and ended up in a coma for one. Five days. Turned out I got water poisoning. Could have died because of the booze and later because of the water but survived both. Moral of the story. With heavy booze use small glasses. Posted this before about how I. Accidentally. Pissed off the crows. Oh god it's a long story. It started when these four boys around 10 or 11 would walk past my house every week to go swimming. And every week. Four weeks in a row. Outside my house the same kid got shat on by a massive crow. Obviously we found this really funny and didn't make the connection at the time he must have done something to piss the crow off. I was putting bird food out in my garden but I was getting loads of feral pigeons so I was trying to shoo them away which this crazy crow must have taken offense to. Soon after I noticed that I was getting cawed at by crows all the time. No matter where I went there was angry crows cawing at me. That's when I googled crows and saw that they can hold grudges. Recognize people. Tell other crows about Ossabud people. So I tried to make a peace offering by throwing food on my shed roof. My kitchen window. With the sink in front of it. Overlooks the shed roof. After throwing food out I stood by the window doing the dishes. This must have also pissed this crow off. Later that day a crow started absolutely screeching and cawing. I went through to the kitchen to see what was going on when a huge bird it landed on my window. In 20 years there has been no bird it on that window because there is a big ledge above it. So this crow must have hung its butt over the ledge just to do that. I went to bed that night only to be woken up at 5am by screaming right outside my bedroom window. I live on the first floor so it couldn't have been a human. I googled crow screaming and sure enough that was the noise I heard. It had chosen the only window with a light on to do that. Later on that day there was a big crow sitting on a tree near that window. If anyone else went to the window it just stayed still but if it saw me it started bouncing on the branch. Like it thought it was funny. Obviously after the eating and screaming I wasn't going to give it any food that day. I did give it food the next day and it must have taken the hint because it never shat on my windows or woke me up by screaming again. However for about a year and a half, every crow for a mile radius round my house would angrily call at me. Don't piss off the crows. I was hanging out at the river with my friends drinking a Capri Sun when I was 8 and a grown man we didn't know pointed at me and yelled aye. That kid drinking Capri Sun my friends started laughing and one of his friends yelled is it good? To this day, I can't drink Capri Sun around those friends without someone saying aye. That kid drinking Capri Sun. TLDR. Not a story but one time I went to sleep drunk. Just after chugging three beers. Woke up with a boner while peeing straight up in the air. Yeah. It rained down straight on my face. I once got locked in the laundry room at my apartment complex and had to call the cops to get me out. I had a dream where terrorists were in the mall. I walked into a fast food chain and got shot. The dream didn't just end there. It ended with a wasted screen just like GTA. The most unexpected people I ever met under the least exciting circumstances. 
I was a janitor at a truck stop big rig mechanic place. They worked on semi trucks, RVs, tour buses whatever. Sometimes a mechanic was working late and there'd be some Joe Blow trucker or Midwestern family waiting to get their vehicle back. So one night I'm be bopping around, gathering trash or whatever, and turn the corner to see six Japanese men, all wearing black leather, studs, eyeliner, spiky hair and all, the MOS guys I've ever seen. Of course I'm like, what the duck, but we got to talking, and I find out they're a Japanese heavy metal band called Diren Grey. Never heard of them. They were on tour and heading to Seattle when they had some issues with their bus while passing through my state, Idaho. They were nice as hell and encouraged me to look them up, and I wished them a good tour and went about my work. One of my favorite memories. Totally bananas. Sweet boys. I worked at a hospital as a doctor's assistant in the orthopedics department. This one time there was a patient who stole a bunch of sheep and when he was cornered by the police he grabbed one and jumped off of a bridge. When asked why he said I thought sheep are soft like clouds so nothing will happen to me. Needless to say he broke every single bone in his body. The second one I can't explain to this day. I was 17 at the time. I was lying in bed playing games on my phone. With my door slightly open. From my bed you can clearly see the corridor no matter what. Even if the door is almost closed. My parents weren't home. Probably buying groceries or something like that. After playing for a bit I got this weird feeling. A feeling that unfortunately I'm very familiar with. You know when you're alone but you can feel something staring at you? That restless feeling in your neck. Back and arms. You feel like something is waiting to meet your eyes. That feeling. At this point. Since I'm used to it. I usually joke around and say things like welcome. Or hey what's up buddy, but I didn't this time. I was almost paralyzed, so I just kept ignoring it. I got so anxious that I glanced at my door, and that was one of the worst mistakes of my life. I saw a huge old man, with no feet, bluish long coat, white hair and beard walking from one side to the other. He was amazingly fast. Again, I was alone. 17 and I've never seen someone like this in my whole life. I ran to the door and closed it as fast as I could, sobbing in terror. I didn't hear any noises and I didn't see his face. I just know that I called my parents and they came back to find me crying. No evidence of someone breaking in. Nothing missing. Front door of my apartment completely locked. I destroy everything I touch, eventually. It's like a mutant power, the kind I don't want. So the story actually begins way back when my mother was pregnant with me. Our kitchen was tiny. You could literally plant one hand on a wall. Lean over and plant the other on the opposite wall kind of deal. Well. One day while she's heavily pregnant with me. She's scrubbing something or the other at ground level and reaches up onto the sink to climb up when she says she got the daddy of static shocks. Hurt. She didn't think nothing of it at the time but soon after I was born. She started to consider it the catalyst for my weird superpower. You see. As I grew up. Things happened. Shop tills which had been working fine all the way up until we got there would suddenly malfunction. Light bulbs would occasionally break whenever I tried to turn lights on. It's entirely unpredictable as to when my mutant power will kick in. I've gone through 12 laptops in my lifetime. And I'm in my 30s. In my adult life. Since leaving home. I have broken 6 oven elements. 8 kettles. 2 TVS and just last week. As I made Christmas dinner. I tried to open the oven to check on the turkey and somehow, handle that had been quite solid up until that very moment, came off in my hand. TL. DR. My mutant power is bad luck J-U-U-J-U-U. I once got on the local news for selling pulled pork but they switched my name with someone else's. I got my finger stuck in a door and I had to tear off my entire fingernail. My dad, brother and myself took our catamaran. Small two hulled sailboat kind of thing. Out at one of the Florida Keys. We needed to cross under the 7 mile bridge to get to the beach where the rest of the family was at. We had the clearance according to my dad but apparently the tide was in. Our mass barely clipped the side of the bridge and started to capsize but it kind of settled and just sat there. We decided the best thing to do was to just flip it the rest of the way and go with the current. We all had great life jackets and were solid swimmers so we weren't worried drowning. While we were trying to flip the catamaran back over, 
It can be done. A coast guard cutter pulled up and got my brother and I on board. They tied the rope from the mast to the back of the boat and got it up eventually with the help of my dad. They wrote my dad a ticket and we continued to the beach. My dad made us swear not to tell my mom. Well that lasted about an hour because people had been fishing off of the old bridge and came to tell us at the beach that there were sharks circling us the entire time. I'm really glad I didn't know that at the time. This sounds like our I am very bad ass but. My first house I lived at out of college had a bunch of guys above up we were really good friends with. One night I'm home alone and there's a knock on the door. I open it to a huge man in a clown mask. Painted black. And grunting. Now I'm not a fighter or anything like that. Nonetheless I ripped off the mask and threw a punch. Only from me to pull my punch at the last moment. It was one of the upstairs guys. He went around for the rest of the night telling anyone who would listen. Do don't scare the chick downstairs. Probably the only baddest thing I've done in my life. When I was young, I had a job and one of the tasks was to drain carboys of water. The water collected from the AC drainage. The nearest drain to dispose of it was in the men's room. So once every two weeks I would drain these carboys. The bathroom was small. One urinal. One stall, one sink. I was pouring the carboy out in the sink when the big boss came in and goes right to the urinal. Since it was a small bathroom I thought I'd give him space and started to tip the bottle back up so I could get out of his way. Boss man has an accent I wasn't very familiar with. He says no. Don't stop. I thought it was kind of strange dart but maybe he has a hard time going and liked the sound of water pouring? Turns out he meant to say no. Don't. Stop. Why? Because the plumbing was backing up. The urinal pulled old faithful and geysered a sweet combo of toilet water and urine all over him. He looked like he got an answer wrong on a Nickelodeon game show. It was a good time. I work as a housekeeper for the elderly. Once had a client who was 97 years old. She was the youngest of 14 children. Had only one sister who was still alive but she lived in Canada. We live in the Netherlands. She had never been married. Never had kids and she was extremely lonely. She lived in an apartment all the way at the end of the hall and couldn't walk to the entrance anymore so she usually just sat inside. One of her hobbies had always been painting. But then she got arthritis and couldn't hold the brushes so she stopped. She started reading to keep the loneliness at bay, but started going blind. I was usually the only person to visit her. I was there every week for 2 hours. We talked a lot. One time. It was nearly Christmas 2011. She told me 2012 was going to be her last year. She was spot on and died the 3rd of January. The same day she told me that. I was in her kitchen humming some kind of Christmas tune. Now what you need to remember is that she was 97. Pretty much blind. Couldn't really walk anymore etc. Suddenly she said. You couldn't hold a tone to save your life. I started laughing a little because she was so right and she said yes. There's nothing wrong with my ears. Guess it's more one of those stories where you had to be there. But still. One of my favorite work encounters in 15 years. When I was a kid we had a cabin on a boat access only lake. We were the only cabin on the arm of the lake and the opposite side of the lake. Think long and narrow lake. Had a train trestle and a train that would pass by twice a day and honk at us and wave. One day while we were fishing on the dock we noticed the train stop on the tracks and continue to sit there for a good hour. We didn't realize why until we saw the conductor hop out and wave at us with both arms. Not knowing what was going on we hopped in our boat and headed across the lake. Once we arrived we realized what was wrong. At the far end of the lake there was a cattle ranch. The cows had gotten out and were now wandering the tracks and blocking the train. Behind them was the trestle over the water they didn't want to cross and in front of them was the train. Whose engine was loud and they didn't want to pass. We had some colorful beach towels in the boat so my dad, me and my twin sister jumped up to shore with our towels and proceeded to herd the cows past the train engine back towards the farm. Apparently beach towels are more terrifying than a train engine. Eventually the train gets to move on and we spend the next hour or two herding cattle down the tracks to the farm. We had to stop halfway and had a bit of trouble however as one of the cows had been hit by the train and had been dragged hundreds of feet down the tracks. It wasn't pretty. It smelled awful. And my sister became a vegetarian for the next year. Eventually we got the cows home minus the one fatality. This might sound crazy but it's totally true. 
Many weird things happen to me. A lot. So I'm always scared to tell most of my friends and family because they would just think I'm crazy or something. So the first one might just be a type of condition that I'm not familiar with. When I wake up, I usually check my phone, roll around for a bit and then get up. But sometimes when I wake up I see hexagons. Like, golden white hexagons that are transparent in the middle. It's not only in the center of my vision, but everywhere. They are kinda shiny and then they fade one by one. I'm 100% sure I wasn't sleeping and this already happened twice now. They last for about 3-6 seconds but it is super weird. I told my family about this one and I guess they didn't really believe me. But when I googled it and found out that there's people like me out there, I guess they did. I was with a friend of mine depositing a bunch of checks one time. He said, careful, someone is going to think you're a drug dealer with all of those checks. I said, I would not accept checks if I was selling drugs. The teller said, right. It's hard enough to get drug dealers to accept US currency. This was an ask, but I couldn't find it. I hated, and still hate, my kindergarten teacher. I'm just gonna call her W. For the sake of not revealing her name. She was awful. I had have an anxiety disorder. I was nervous around new people. And she would try to tell me to stop being nervous and just go talk with the other kids. I was also afraid of the dark, like most kids were. However, one time when she turned off the lights for movie time, I cried because I was scared. She called my mom, and I cried even more. She would call my mom every time my anxiety would get in the way of some group projects. I also have arachnophobia, and we had a lesson on bugs, and she tossed a rubber spider into the group of children. It landed on my head. Let's just say it was a lot of screaming. We had a fire lesson every October. She would always tell us to stop drop and roll. We had to practice doing exactly that. When it was my turn, I stopped, dropped, and cried. She called my mom for that too. She had been teaching kindergarten since my mom and dad were teenagers. I had always felt scared around her. Then I moved to a different town. And my first grade teacher was a lot nicer. So anyways thanks for listening to me rant. When I was in middle school our math classroom had a window that had a perfect view of the side and part of the front of the school and one time while I was in class I saw the special needs kid hop the fence that surrounds the school and run. There were so many teachers after him. The police caught him and brought him back though. Funniest thing I've ever saw at that school. One time, as an innocent child I discovered I had no gag reflex. How, you ask? Well we had a freaking competition in year 3 in the class because we were so bored. Each person grabbed a pencil and slowly started putting it down their throat. Whoever got the most amount of pencil in their mouth won. The teacher had just left the room to go make copies of something so she would be gone for ages. I was the second person and immediately won when I put a 15-20cm inside my mouth hole and didn't gag. That recess break my friends and I played truth or dare and we all went around. I chose dare and I was dared to eat my banana hole by a girl that was in my class, and I obliged. I just became that kid in third grade who had no gag reflex. When I told my family of my amazing discovery, they made the comment boys will love you, and I didn't understand until a few years ago what they meant. Edit. Thanks for the upvotes kind strangers. One time when I was 12, my mom took some of her friends, my sister. My brother and I to a crater type lake. We rented a paddle board. Which my mom used first. She bragged that she had gotten all the way across the lake in one go. Of course. Being 12. I wanted to beat her. What I didn't know was that she'd said halfway across the lake. So. I took that paddle board and went at it. I got so far across the lake that I couldn't see the shore. Of course I couldn't get lost it was just a big circle and had quite a few people who were also out on the lake ask me if I was okay. Capital I, unaware of the oddness of a preteen by herself in the middle of a lake, said yes. I was perfectly okay. When I was nearly across the lake, a rescue boat pulled up beside me. The teenage dude driving it said kid, your family thinks you drowned. They're freaking out. They sent me out to make sure you were okay. He offered me a ride back and I refused. I turned my paddle board around and went back to shore. I checked my watch and realized holy it I was out there for four and a half hours. 
My family yelled at me because my dumbass nearly gave them a heart attack by paddleboarding. TL. DR. I paddleboarded for long enough that my family thought I was dead. One time I was with my buddy at the mall Christmas shopping and while we were sitting on a bench to take a break we are approached by four individuals. They were telling us about their cult religion weird thing they had going on and invited us to their farm BC they wanted to teach, indoctrinate, us. My buddy and I listened to the 20 minute long spiel and at the conclusion they asked, so, what do you say? Before I could say anything my friend just says, pull my finger, and extends it to him. The four kind of them looked at each other confused and politely obliged, as soon as they pulled my buddy at himself. Literally shat. Right then and there, it was bad. And we started crying and then they just left disgusted. He said he had to go the whole time they were talking and just couldn't hold it anymore and since he just bought new clothes he went to the bathroom and changed. I couldn't believe it. But needless to say, we didn't join a weird cult that day. It was a rainy day in year 9, ages 13-14. And me and a few friends were stuck in a gazebo, like 10 meters across, at lunchtime because, well, rain. Also seeking shelter. A group of year 10s and 11s also entered the gazebo, occupying the east side of the structure, naturally. A standoff developed as there were two distinct factions vying for control of the gazebo, mutually intolerant of each other. Everyone was standing sorta of awkwardly, desiring the whole space. Then the dispute escalated. Some of the year 10 started throwing water, squash and other liquids at us in an attempt to evict us. And, being socially retarded, I suggested that I might throw my own liquids. This caused a strange reaction. And I realized that I could turn it to my advantage. Without thinking, I slowly began to unzip my fly. That raised a few laughs. And the chavs called me a lad. Shook my hand and left almost instantly. It was an oddly proud moment. Getting a handshake from someone I didn't know well or like. For unzipping my fly in front of them. Still my most triumphant moment. TLDR. Made older kids leave by unzipping my fly. Ever since I was young I'd have vivid dreams. Sometimes I'd even experience lucid dreaming, which I eventually learned to control. Sometimes I'd live for days, months, and as of recently, years in my dreams. When I was younger I didn't understand this. Waking up disoriented and wondering when I'd wake up from this dream, I'd spend weeks questioning reality, which, looking back, also took its toll on my social development, whenever that happens now. Because I can dream up pretty much an entire life, I spend a bit less time disoriented, because I'm an adult that understands that they're only dreams, but I'll occasionally become depressed if I dream up an entire, fulfilling life, and sometimes I dream that I've woken up, only to realize the alarm isn't shutting off and I'm still asleep, and you just keep waking up, pretty much trapped in a dream that only lasted 3 minutes and not hours. My dad went to a convenience store as a child, and bought a bag of cheetahs when he finished the bag. He saw there was a scratch tag at the bottom, so he scratched it, and, voila, he'd won the second bag of the cheetahs of the day, so he starts eating that one, scratches the tag at the bottom, and, boom, a third bag. So, my dad gets yet another bag and finishes it, it happens again, and again, and again, eventually, he's too full and his cheetah streak eventually runs out, but not before he ate 7 to 8 bags of cheetahs. He went home, almost threw up, and got rashes. Also, Happy New Year's Eve everyone. A couple years ago in university I had a girl in my sculpture class ask me what time it was. I didn't have my phone on me or my glasses so I pointed her to the analog clock on the wall. She looked me dead in the face and said she didn't know how to read analog clocks. She could only understand digital. I couldn't contain my reaction and stood there dumbfounded by that. I still think about that sometimes. She was at least 20 plus and never took a couple minutes to figure out how. She graduated around the same time as me. She has a bachelor's degree but can't read a ducking clock. 